Hi folks, it's Andy and welcome to this week's Kendo Rant. I've got loads of questions today, three full pages of them. Uh, really looking forward to getting stuck in. Uh, before I do though, I'm going to have to ask you to subscribe and not just subscribe, you've got to click the little bell. You go down there, subscribing doesn't mean anything by the way, you have to click the little bell if you want to improve at Kendo. That's the Kendo bell, I told you in the last video. But if you press that, you get better at Kendall. Um, so give it a try. Um, yeah, go and click the bell. Yeah, get better at Kendall. Okay. Right, first question. Hi, Andy. Uh, in this video, you said something like, Kikentai Ichi is not just stamping and striking. And I think you said uh, a similar thing in a past video. Um, so I want to ask, what exactly is Kikentai no Ichi? So in Kendall, we strive to make swords that perfectly unify the sword, body, and spirit into a single perfect strike. Okay? That concept is Kikentai no Ichi. Ki means spirit. Ken is a sword. Tai is the body. No Ichi together. Okay? So it's often manifested in strikes that are timed with a leap forward with a stamp. Okay? But it's not timed on the front foot, by the way. It's not timed when the right foot lands. It's timed as you leap forward. Man, this way. Because the left foot comes up together with the right. Um, that's, a, that's a misinterpretation actually, um, which I think um, we'll talk about in the next question. But um, <laughs> you don't need to stamp to have Kikentai no Ichi. It's just uh, strikes tend to be more dynamic, uh, they tend to be more powerful, they tend to be faster if you leap forward with Humikomi. Um, but uh, strikes with Suriyashi, sliding footwork, mem, this way, or Hirakiyashi, mem, this way, uh, these also count as kikentai no ichi, okay, as long as it's all unified together, okay, so it's not men this way, yeah, or men this way, yeah, that's, that's, that's the point, okay, so, you know, I think it was in context of the last, uh, in the last show, we talked about people that maybe they couldn't stamp for whatever reason, for some sort of injury, um, then yeah, you can still make strikes that don't stamp, but still meet the criteria of kikentai no ichi, Okay, like think about door strikes as well. Um, like men nuki door or men kaiji door, we don't do from you call me on that. Yeah, that's a um, that, that's quite a good example. Actually, when you do men nuki door, they do men, and you go this way. You don't you don't stamp as you hit the door. Yeah, you, you use suriyashi, bam, the door this way, or even ayumiyashi. Okay, that's a crossing footwork. Okay, so you don't need to do that. Okay, hope that answers. Okay, so next question. I'm going to get to this question in just a second, but don't forget if you do like these <laughs> videos, if you do like the shows that we put on, whether it's these um, Kendo rants, whether it is uh, the analysis videos, the translation videos, or any of the other content we put out there, um, don't forget the way to support the channel is by shopping at kendostar.com. Kendallstar.com is my equipment website, and I'm saying it right now because if you skip to this point in the video, trying to get past this, yeah, I've got you. All right, <laughs> shop at Kendallstar. Okay, next question. Uh, what do you think are some of the more uh, most common misconceptions about Kendall from Kendoka themselves? Um, so, um, the uh, I'd say that some of the common misconceptions. Um, from uh, that most, that lots of people that do Kendo actually have about Kendo. Um, probably the first one is, like I just said, you have to stamp for it to count as um, Kikentai no Ichi. You don't, okay? It's just usually the best way to do it, do a strike effectively, okay? Um, <clears throat> another one is that Kendo is sword fighting or relates to sword fighting. Kendo's not supposed to be about teaching you how to fight duels. It's a method of uh, self-improvement of the human character. Um, it literally uh, sort of says that in the concept of Kendall. <laughs> um, another one is that you don't need to referee to improve at Kendall. Uh, you have to do referee. You have to have the experience of doing Shimpan and lots of people put that off until their higher grades. Um, you'll gain a better and deeper understanding of Kendo, of the concept of you call Datotsu, valid strikes, um, if you start to do Shimpan from as early as possible. From Shodan, you should start to get some sort of experience of doing Shimpan, even if it's just within your club. You don't have to do it at an official Taikai, but you know, if, even if it's just within your club, refereeing together with the other people in your, in you know, you know, if you're in groups of three, I think that's a good thing to do. One person referees while two people do Ippon but that sort of thing. Um, I think that's something else. Uh, and the last one, and the one that really does grind my gears, is uh, that door color is somehow connected to your your ability or skill level. 
um, or you have to be a certain level to be a, to wear a flashy colored door. It's total nonsense. No, but like I never experienced that whilst I lived in Japan. I've only heard of that outside of Japan. Um, if you want to wear a brightly colored door, you're perfectly free to. It's your burger. It's your money to spend on it. Um, no one has the right to judge your ability based on the color of your armor. And if they do that, like I said before, they're kendoing wrong. <laughs> Okay, next one. Uh, why do some Shinai have a fluffy Skagawa uh, saki and Sakigawa? So basically it's because when they make the, le uh, the leather fittings, it's made of uh, cow leather. Uh, it's actually a piece of leather that's then split. Um, it's, it's actually usually split into two. Uh, sorry, split into three rather than two. Um, we often think of it as, as uh, two, but actually there's a, there's a middle piece as well. It's split into three pieces um, and they either use the outside part or the inside part, um, and usually um, it's the uh, I think it's the outside part that tends sorry the inside part that tends to be fluffier. But either way, the, the the bit that goes on the outside is the bit that's facing. I'm pretty sure it's the bit that's facing the um, the middle part that they don't use. Uh, if that makes sense. Um, <clears throat> so yeah, that's why. Um, and also it can come down to other things as well as to like how much oil is on your hands. Um, you know, like obviously everyone's individual like that. Um, and if, you know, uh, or if you use like uh, real deer skin palms, uh, rather than synthetic ones, they tend to make it smoother because of the oil, natural oil that's in the palm leather. Um, that's, that's worth considering as well. Okay, um, <laughs> uh, I've got loads more questions but before i get into this next one as well i've got a little apology to make i really um sincerely um made a a, a terrible mistake uh in the last video um and it, i need to rectify it uh by making an apology to uh kendo memes from the kokoro dis um i called you kendo memes in the last video uh when the correct name is indeed kendo memes from the kokoro dis so uh, please accept uh, my deepest, sincerest apologies for that mischaracterization. Okay, next question. Uh, <laughs> um, Mr. Fisher, please, can you explain if kendo is only from Migigamae? Uh, there are no left-handed kendo ga. In Shiai, must I think, uh, must, must I, uh, sorry, in Shiai it must be, I think, but in the dojo, uh, maybe it's just only right side kendo. So look, uh, no, there is no uh, rule that says you have to have the right hand in front and the left hand at the bottom, um, or that the right foot forward and the left foot behind. But it's nothing to do with whether you're right-handed or left-handed. You don't have an advantage if you're right-handed or left-handed in kendo. Everyone struggles with it the, um, the same amount. Trust me, I've got a lot of experience in teaching beginners that both right-handed and left-handed people. Um, it's better to learn the standard kamae, uh, chudan no kamae. Um, you will have a fuller experience of kendo. You will learn more. Um, you will pick up the basics of kendo quickly, quicker, um, and you will be able to explore other ideas, maybe like jodan no kamae, where you have the left foot forward, stuff like that, later on down the line. Um, it's you don't need to worry about <clears throat> if you're if you're like right-handed, you don't need to have your right hand at the bottom or if you're left handed the right hand at the bottom um of the scar um just do it the same uh, way as your teacher teaches you and you will definitely improve faster next one uh, so i want to be keeping my shinai maintained properly um however the basic shinai i got from kendall star seems slightly different than the one in your shinai maintenance video is there a chance of you doing your maintenance video for your basic shinai uh, or am i just missing something and the shinai uh, are all the same thanks okay so I need to update that video, okay? Yeah, um, I filmed that video right at the beginning of Kendo Star when we first started out. We, um, you know, we, we, were, we were actually sourcing our Shinai from a different place than we are now. Um, <clears throat> the principle, the overall principles are the, are the same, all right? The only difference is, is if you've got a, a scar that doesn't have the two loops, if it just has the one loop to pass it through, you can still do the same thing. You still pass the thing, th the, the Tsuru through, <clears throat> just the one loop instead of the two all right just the one and then start wrapping it around but i will make an updated one soon okay i promise um next one with regards to the knots on the kendo uh, uniform uh, we usually use yoko musubi uh 
we don't usually, we always use Yoko Musubi. Uh, is this <laughs> the, also the case for the lower knot inside the gi? Uh, it seems that Tate Musubi knot uh, may sit flatter this way. Also, I've heard that the Tate Musubi knot is used at funerals for, this, the, for the deceased. Is this the case and is it the reason for not tying Tate Musubi knots? Thanks. So uh, basically, um, the difference between Yoko Musubi and Tate Musubi is the Yoko Musubi is the correct way to tie the uh, the bow that we use in Kendo, whether it's on the men, whether it's on the dogi, uh, whether it's on the hakama, on the tare, and it sits so that it's horizontal. That's what Yoko means, it's horizontal. And the incorrect way is the Tate Musubi, which is when it sits vertically like that, okay? Um, no, you still use the Yoko Musubi even for the inside of the doggy, um, first off. Uh, and yeah, um, <clears throat> yeah, it's actually true that um, when they dressed, when they dress a deceased person in, in Japan, um, they often put the clothes uh, inside out. Um, so the, the kendogi, the, not the kendogi, but the, traditionally the, Uagi that they would wear would cross over the opposite way than what I, what the, the you would normally have it, which is the same way as our kendogi, and also the knots they would tie would be tate musubi rather than yoko musubi, and probably this is the reason why culturally um, you're supposed to tie the yoko musubi. Um, not just in Kendo, but in Japanese culture as a whole, like when they tie their shoelaces <clears throat> or when they tie that bow else, you know, in other aspects, it's always the um, Yoko Musubi. Um, probably because it's got the connotation of when they, you know, tie up the clothes on a corpse. Now, um, <clears throat> having said that, um, it also serves a practical purpose. The Tate Musubi comes untied easier it comes untied easier because because it's vertical. It's already got gravity pulling on the string that unties it. So it's better to tie it on Yoko Musubi and then it won't come untied as often. Okay, next one. Uh, hi Andy, lots of sensei keep their tip very low uh, in Kamae. Uh, this looks like a perfect om opportunity for a good tsuki to me. But also people often tell it's rude and not very welcome to tsuki a sensei or higher than kendoka. What's your mind on that topic? Okay, so Lots of them do keep their kensen low, um, and there's a couple of reasons for that. Um, some as it's part of their seme, some it's part of their natural kamae, some people, some sensei is fine, the dibanawaza or ojiwaza are easier from that position. Um, it might be a good opportunity to ski them, uh, but if you can, why, why not attack men though? You could also hit their men, right? If it's a good chance to hit ski, it's also a good chance to hit men. Um, <clears throat> now, in terms of the whether it's rude or not to do ski on sensei, some people think it is. Uh, <clears throat> I don't think it's necessarily rude to, to do the ski on sensei, but it depends on your relationship with that sensei and also what the difference in the grade is. If you're like second dan, third dan, or even fourth dan, fifth dan, and the sensei is like seven dan or eight dan, and you're like firing out ski at them, um, you kind of, it, it brings up the question to me um, as to what, what's the purpose of your keiko with that sensei? Um, what's the purpose of, of attacking the ski? Like I say, you could attack men. And maybe with if you attack men, maybe they're going to do the kaishido uh, or devanawaza. Uh, and if you hit ski, you'll trick them and you'll hit the ski instead. Um, if so, well done you. Uh, that's basically what it ends with. Um, you know, I don't, you know, if, if, you're, if you're close in, sort of grade to that person then that's different because you have a gokaku geiko but they're doing the hikitate geiko you know often they're you know it's they're often allowing you to strike them even though you don't necessarily realize that um or maybe they're allowing you to attack and they're intentionally destroying your attacks with ojiwaza or debanawaza uh, in order to give you the opportunity to, to to continue striving against the hardship um of such a keiko um and if you start, you know, if they're sort of offering you a men strike and you kind of circumvent that with a ski strike, you're kind of missing the point. And that's the kind of impress impression it can give. And that can annoy some senseis as well. And I've been there, like, it's kind of annoying. Where it's like, look, you don't get this, do you? You know, but it's like, I'm trying to help you here and you're just trying to make yourself feel good about yourself. Um, it can come across a bit like that. Um, so that's why I'd avoid, I would, wouldn't do that. Um, if, if you go for like, if, if they're like, oh, Ippon Shobu, and it's Ippon Shobu, that's a bit different. But if it's like during the general Jigeko, 
like you don't need to be like practicing your ski strikes against like a seventh or eighth non sensei. You, you should be trying to make attacks with Temi, and regardless of whether they're successful or not, um, I think that's the best way to get the most out of your Keiko with them. Um, not randomly though, <laughs> depends on your level though, really. Um, but yeah, um, mm, that's that's what I think. Uh, next one, since waki in wakigamae, I believe, has multiple mean meanings, how do you say wakigamae in English? Is it side, sta is side stance acceptable? Thanks. Uh, I'd still just use the word wakigamae for the most part. Uh, I'd just go, uh, when you stand like this, it's called wakigamae. Um, but if you wanted to call it side stance, yeah, I guess that's the most appropriate. Yeah, the word waki can mean lots of things. It can mean armpit. It can mean your side. It can mean by your side. Um... I'm not sure exactly what the interpretation is of that kanji for the term wakigamae, but um, it's probably just because it is a side stance, like you say. Um, so yeah, probably that's the best translation of it. Uh, next one, uh, I'd like to fix the chipped paint off my men, but I'm a bit confused on what type of paint I should use. In one of your previous previous rants, you mentioned a type used on plain models. Could you please talk more about how to use it properly for the fix, uh, the number of layers, and what brand type you're using? Okay, so um, and there's another there's another question which I'll read in a minute, but this one is I use a brand called Humbrol. Uh, I don't know if it's avail available in other countries, but it's just a, a gloss black enamel paint. Um, which you usually get for like, like I say, model uh, airplanes or trains or something like that. Um, and you need a, uh, a brush, um, like a, it needs to be synthetic bristles, not, <clears throat> not natural bristles. Uh, I think I use, they, they come in different sizes to paintbrushes. I use the size two, like artist paintbrushes. I use the size two, which I thought was the perfect size um, for being uh, small enough to get, a, you know, in, you know, sort of paint the detail nicely. Um, without getting it on the member, uh, the member dom or on the mengane, but also not so small it was going to take me forever. Uh, it just needed one coat for me, but if you don't feel that that's enough, then you can paint two coats. Uh, I think that would be fine as well. Um, <clears throat> you can, uh, you all, all, you will also need some kind of um, spirit to wash the brush. It's not water soluble paint, so you'll need something like white spirit or turpentine. Uh, or methylate spirit, something like that. I use white spirit and it, you can get odorless artists white spirit. That's the best stuff because white spirit really stinks. Um, I'm not sure what it's called in other countries, but if you Google it, I'm sure it'll come up. Um, it, it's just an alcohol based thing. Don't drink it. <laughs> uh, not that kind of alcohol, all right? But it's for, you know, washing there, washing the brush. Um, and that, that, that should do the job just great. Uh, next one, on another note, I admire your marketing skills. Where did you learn all of this? Have you ever attended any sort of business school or is it all just you? Thanks. <laughs> um, okay, uh, I've never been to a business school. No, not at all. Um, and I'm not really sure I've got marketing skills. Um, but look, I'm passionate about what I do um, with Kendall Star. And um, it's my lifeblood to spread my message through Kendall Star to or everywhere in the world. Um, so it comes natural to me, I guess, but I think that's because, and something I've noticed, this is just something I've noticed personally um, in my experience of working at different com companies um, in the same field and also um, observing other companies as well in the same field. Uh, what really def differentiates me and how I've always carried out my duties, uh, either when I worked for them or now I run Kendall Star, is empathy. Um, I really empathise with our customers because I am one of you. I am one of you. I know what it's like to be in your position. I know how it feels and I know how to, well, how I would feel if I was in your position. Okay. Uh, and that's something that I feel a lot of our rivals neglect. Um, it's really something that's important to me that we put the uh, experience um, that you receive, the customer receives um, when you interact with Kendall Star, we put that first and we work back from there. And that's the opposite of what it seems the rest of the rest of the guys in this in this industry do. They tend to build something and then try to sell it to you. Whereas I've always started with you and worked how can we work back from there? How can we meet what you need? 
um, and I think that's that's where that comes from. Um, I don't think I don't think I'm master of marketing techniques. I'm just honest. Um, I think that the the goals of Kendall Star are genuine, and I think that they're uh, virtuous, um, and that they are um, necessary in order for the uh, betterment of Kendall as a whole. Uh, and I just love Kendall. I really love it. It's it's part of who I am. It's part of my life, uh, and I want to spread it around the world so everyone else can benefit like I did. Um, and, ham and continue to do so. Um, I don't think that that's any special marketing skills. I don't think that I'm uh, particularly special or clever or particularly, I don't think I've got any sort of, I, I certainly don't have any sort of special education on that sort of thing. Um, but yeah, uh, I think it's just empathy and honesty, to be honest. Next question. <laughs> uh, anything you want to rant about that's bugging you? Uh, okay, I, I commented on this directly. Uh, I already did it. It was about redesigning the men and why it won't happen. Um, if you haven't watched that video, go and watch it. People ask me all the time, why don't we just re redesign the men? Well, why don't we just put swap the men guy in for a carbon fiber one or put a plastic screen in it or something like that? Um, or why don't, we just, why don't we just redesign the men so it, it's easier to take on and put off and stuff like that? Um, I did a whole video about it. Go and watch that. Um, I'll put a link in the description if I don't forget. <laughs> Next one. Uh, hi, Andy. I really enjoyed your recent review of Ghost of Tsushima. Uh, hats off for doing a post on something a little more outside the box. Um, you mentioned how something like this is a great opportunity to generate interest in Kendall. I really do think it is. Um, what other non-traditional outlets do you feel are untapped opportunities to share our love of Kendall? I myself are particularly interested in Comic Cons. Uh, I think a booth and a demonstration here will generate tons of interest. Just a thought. Take care. Um, yeah, um, this is the thing. I, I think anything like that, Comic Con, brilliant idea would be you know, if you've got a booth there to advertise your Kendall Club, you're definitely going to get loads of interest. It's bound to be the sort of thing people like, you know, comic conventions, anime conventions, Japanese festivals. I know, I know lots of people like, lots of clubs do attend like Japanese festivals or Japan Matsuris and stuff like that. But there's other stuff as well. Anything in popular culture that can be sort of linked um, to an interest in Kendall, um, you know, we have to use it and I think it's good to use it. And the fact that this game, Ghost of Tsushima, came out on PS4 that's just all about uh, samurai culture and it's, you know, if you love Japan, you're gonna love the game. Uh, and if you play, if you love the game, you're gonna, you know, there's a chance that you're gonna develop an interest in Japan and samurai culture and Bushido culture and stuff like that. And that could, with help, uh, be directed to an interest in Kendall. So um, I think the same thing happened many years ago when like that film, The Last Samurai came out. Um, anything like that could 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 help. Uh, next one, uh, is there any other martial arts to learn similar to Kendall, works well with Kendall that improve and enhances the flow? Uh, thank you again. Um, not to my knowledge. <laughs> I know I'm gonna get some hate for that because I didn't say Idol, all right, but I don't know, uh, I don't. I, I've, I've, I've got a tiny bit of knowledge of Yidol. Uh, I don't think you need to do Yidol to understand Kendall. Uh, I don't think the study of Yidol necessarily benefits Kendall from what I've experienced so far, especially in beginners. People that have got Yidol experience tend to struggle when they come into the Kendall context because it's very different. We don't use a Shina like we use a Katana. Um, we're not supposed to. Um, so yeah, uh, I don't think so, to be honest. I'm not saying don't do them. I'm not saying don't do them. Uh, and I'm not even saying that doing other martial arts will necessarily take away from your Kendall, but I also don't know if they will directly benefit. But I don't know, I'm not, I, I'm, uh, you know, I don't, I don't really practice any of the other arts either. So Kendall's, Kendall's, uh, Kendall's my main thing. My only thing. <laughs> Uh, okay, next one. Any thoughts on striking powerful, fast, yet light, as in not to hurt? The concept seems to defy physics. Yes, it does, doesn't it? Um, I saw a video where Nishimura um, Hidehisa, the former All Japan champion, three-time All Japan champion, fantastic, amazing, wonderful uh, competitor. Uh, I've had the pleasure of doing Shi'ai with him, uh, albeit for a very short time uh, myself. Uh, and I can tell you, being on the receiving end of his strikes, they're lightning fast. They're super powerful and they're not painful. Uh, and I remember him specifically describing when teaching kote strikes to think not so much of hitting the kote uh, as hard as you can, but striking and then immediately lifting off the target. So 
instead of bam this way but more bam this way bam this way yeah a bit like uh like i get the imagination of like bruce lee when he does that sort of one inch punch and it's like pew, like that like a bit like that you know it's like a kind of snap bam like that rather than poof, yeah um and i think that's the concept behind it i can't describe it into like perfect you know uh explanations in terms of words and stuff but i think the idea of the moment you've you've hit to then instantly lift off again um is kind of part of it um but you, you still do need to hit hard enough for it to be you called that but it needs to have that snap bam bam there like that and it's it's i think it's through relaxation especially in the wrists yeah not like that but bam 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 like that okay i don't know if the camera's going to pick that up but that's the that's the movement you need in your wrist, I think, when you strike. Pam, like that, pam, like that. A bit like when you knock, knock on a door or something, I guess. I don't know. Um, it's another analogy I heard. Uh, next one. Hi, Andy. I have three questions. Uh, I have this man that oddly has those buttons on the inside of the men gun here. They're so hidden that I even forget that they're even there. Do you know what they're for? Since it's the only bug set that I've ever seen with it. Um, okay. So, therefore, it looks like they're for attaching like a like the Anzen Ago type uh pad for behind the 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 ski daddy um i don't know why you don't have those with it like one of those with it it looks like that men was supposed to be supplied with it but i don't know it's not normal for them to have it um and they're not necessary but if they're not in the way just forget about them um the next one says uh also what's your opinion on door buttons and what why does my favorite kendo store that has free international shipping on every item not offer them i think you've just answered your own question there um the <laughs> uh, my opinion on door buttons is uh, to give them a miss uh, and i'm speaking to somebody that when i started kendo i used to use the door buttons there we go i've said it i've confessed i've confessed i used to use door buttons it's true it is true and i used to think they were cool i used to think they were convenient because uh, i could always put my door on quickly and have it at the same height at the same time all the time um what I was missing was that it made me look like uh, a non-serious seven-year-old. Because <laughs> uh, I don't even know of any serious kendo clubs in Japan that let their kids use that, uh, use those things. Um, so look, um, you need to learn how to tie the door. And if you use those, you won't learn how to do it. You'll avoid learning how to do it. Put them in the bin if you've got them. You don't need them, all right? Uh, they make you look... You know, it's, it's a bit like I don't wear like a bib when I go to a restaurant because I don't need it. Yeah, that's basically what you're doing. You're putting on a kid's item. Yeah, so and I'm saying this is someone that used to do it. All right. So I get it. I get it. But nah, let's leave it. Let's leave it. OK. Uh, and in terms of uh, why your favorite kendo store that has free international shipment doesn't offer them is two reasons. One is uh what I just said. <laughs> I try not to sell anything um, on Kendo Star that I wouldn't use myself. Um, the only, I think the only ex exception I can think of at the moment on Kendo Star of a product that we have that I wouldn't use myself is the Anzen Ago and that's because people kept asking for it. Uh, and I put it out to the community, community, do you want us to have it? I think, I don't think you need it. Um, and the community told me they wanted it, so we put it on there. Um, and the second reason is, like you said, we offer free international shipping on everything. It's not free for us. It's free for you, <laughs> but it's not free for us. All right. So that means that those little door buttons are going to end up costing you like $25 when they're like worth about two. So um, I don't think so. Uh, next one. Uh, how's your buddy Max? Will he return to the Kendo show? Uh, <laughs> yeah, he's good. Um, you know, we're in pretty regular contact. He's, uh, he seems doing doing pretty well um obviously with the whole i was supposed to see him earlier this year but because of the whole you know virus situation i, I had to cancel my trip to japan uh, he lives over in japan of course um and i'm based in the uk right now so um you know we don't get to see each other as much as we'd like to um will he return to the kendo show i'm sure i'm sure he'll be back on the kendo show at some point uh, next one. Hi, Andy. When I first started Kendo when I was younger, there was a company out there that offered door that had an outline of images on them. Being younger, I thought it was cool to get one with a red dragon outline. My former sensei never really liked it because it wasn't traditional. Uh, is it a really 
it is a really well constructed piece of ball gun. I'd rather not replace it. Uh, is there a way to paint over the door that wouldn't get completely destroyed during practice? Figured you being a ball gun designer might have some knowledge on how the other types of coloured door are created. Uh, and what they do to make them durable enough to withstand repeated strikes. Uh, I assume there's some type of coating that's applied over the paint or decal. Yeah, the door die is painted before the door is assembled. So um, if you really want to paint it over, it's going to be a tough job without taking the door part. What you could do though, and what I know some people have done, is like um, masked off the mune uh, and the, the heady cower at the bottom. Uh, and then like sprayed it like you would like with car paint, how durable it is. I don't know. You're not supposed to do it. You're not supposed to repaint your door. Um, so I can't really give you advice on how to do that because uh, it, it's it, it's not something to do. If you really like the door, keep it. If you don't, if you if you don't like wearing it, keep it to one side. Get yourself a nice new door with a nice different design that you're happy to use. I think that's a better option, to be honest. Uh, next one. Hi Andy, when I'm putting on Borger, I like the part where, uh, while donning the Tenegree, where I reflect on the writing and image that's on the Tenegree. Uh, as I find it hard to do that properly with the image of samurai cats, are you planning on uh, planning to get some Tenegree with mottos? Uh, there's only one, two if you count Kendo is life one. Why would I not count that? Technically <laughs> um, uh, like that. Uh, there's a whole collection of Shinai bags of mottos. Yeah, um, okay. Well, first off, the Samurai Cats Tenegui is actually a representation of the Shinsengumi, um, which is like, uh, they were like a kind of imperial police force during like um, the Edo period and stuff. I'm not a super sharp expert on that as you can probably tell but uh, <laughs> I think it's kind of a cool concept to contemplate anyway but still um yeah look um yeah if you'd like to have different uh designs of Tenegui with different uh writings on um then yeah I'd be I'd be happy to source them and put them on the on the um on the site uh leave me a comment down below if that's something you'd like to see on Kendo Star and if you've got suggestions of of Japanese phrases or something that you'd like to see on there and um, leave them as well and maybe we'll uh, maybe we'll make your dreams come true <laughs> next one um, hi Andy you should do a very special kendo show episode with Jesse Enkamp the karate nerd uh, that could be funny but also very instructive because you two know a lot about your respective martial arts uh, yeah that'd be kind of fun I uh, don't know who that guy is but um, I'm sure he's I and I only, I only don't know who he is because I don't know anything about karate I don't practice karate I don't follow any karate youtubers um, it'd be kind of fun if you'd be up for that I'd be I'd be interested to to hear him out uh, next one, uh, have you thought of in indexing all the questions and answers from these kendo rants for easy reference? Uh, there have been some really amazing questions and answers that I've heard in the past and would love to re-listen to them, but I uh, wouldn't know where to begin. <laughs> yeah, I'd love to be able to do that. That'd be pretty awesome, wouldn't it? But I don't have like a temporal time vortex where I could just pause everything and just sit and do all that. It'd be pretty awesome if I could do that though. Not to do the questions, there's loads of stuff I do with the temple time vortex, but now, nah. <laughs> all right, well, let's lose the sarcasm. Uh, I, I don't have time to do that. I'd, I'd love to do that. I really would. Um, but these Kendall Ram videos, like, I know they look so amazingly, like, wonderfully produced, like, such a, such a, su such a high quality professional standard. Uh, <laughs> but you know and I know it looks like there's a team of like 20 people doing it but actually no it's just me with a camera and a green screen uh, so yeah um, bear with me alright um, buy some more stuff at Kendo Star maybe we can grow the team and do that uh, next one <laughs> uh, as we begin to contemplate a uh, possible return to practice here in the UK the advice from both the ZNKR and our own beloved association is that if the change in facilities offer limited space people should consider changing into changing gear at home or use facilities in small groups to maintain social distancing this has got me thinking if you had no alternative but to change at home one have you ever had to drive to a venue wearing a hakama and kendogi and two what kind of hakama would you consider suitable for driving in synthetic or cotton okay so it's in, when I lived in Japan, lots of dojos in Japan don't have changing rooms. They don't have them. Yeah. Um, so I used to drive to and from the dojo wearing my doggy all the time. It's like normal and loads of most people did. Most people do get changed at home and then go to and from the dojo um, in their doggy and hakama. Not most people. Lots of people do. Um, 
so yeah, I've had to drive to a venue doing that all, all the time. <laughs> There's no problem with it. Uh, and in terms of what would I consider suitable for driving, the synthetic ones are a bit better, especially if you've got a light coloured interior. If you've got a light coloured interior and you've got those sort of eyes on Hakama, it might stain them a bit. So yeah, I, I tend to prefer the, uh, the synthetic ones for doing that personally. Next one, uh, hi Andy, do you need to do anything uh, to preserve your shin eye, like oil it for example? I'm sure I overheard someone talk about using linseed oil, is it necessary? Uh, yeah, it is better to give them a little bit of a coat of oil um, every now and again, just to keep them um, from drying out. Uh, I've got a video about how to do it, but like I said earlier in this video, I'm gonna redo that so we can have more, um, you know, a more up-to-date version of how to do it. It's not too hard though. Um, Linseed oil, I don't recommend as much. It's a bit too thick and goopy. Um, I, 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 I either use, we've got a kurumi oil, which you can get on Kendo Star, um, or failing that, you can just get like a, a vegetable oil from the supermarket, it'll be all right. Uh, next one, uh, can you tell me tips that, this is the last one by the way, uh, can you tell me tips that about Kendall before I enter the dojo? So here's a question, uh, I could make, how can I make a Kendall Federation in my country, Saudi Arabia? Uh, and I need a hint for this one. Um, two, how to open the Kendall Dojo and how to make products. And is it actually to make a Dojo and team? Okay, right. Um, so the first one, I think you put in the cart before the horse in terms of making a Kendall Federation. You need to make a club before you make a Kendall Federation. Make a club. Advertise in the local area. Try and find other people that are interested in learning Kendall. Um, it's going to be tough because probably there's not many teachers around you. But um, there's some great uh, sort of free resources, Kendo Zero to Shodan, uh, that you can use to pick up the basics and practice with your mates. Um, I recommend doing that and seeing what sort of interest you can get in Kendall in your area so you can start to get a club together that covers the cost of running a club. Um, you don't need to produce any uh, products. I do that for you at kendostar.com. Um, and uh, you can make a team once you've got a door open running, you've got plenty of people uh, practicing. Uh, and I think you'll find that sort of um, around that area of the world, there's more Kendall than you think. Um, I don't know exactly about in Saudi Arabia, but I know that in other areas of the Middle East, there's definitely other kendo clubs. So you might even be able to get in touch with them and form some sort of league um, or some sort of you know um, information exchange. I'm sure there's something you can do. Obviously, a kendo star will try and support you as much as we can in terms of your equipment. Um, and then from there, worry about starting a federation. But there's no point starting a federation until you've got loads, you know, a lot more people. Uh, and plenty of clubs because your federation won't be able to join like a, a bigger federation until it's got enough people practicing and has got enough funds to do so because it costs money to do that. Okay, that's it for today. Thank you for joining me. I hope you enjoyed it. Don't forget, you've got to ring that bell if you want to improve at Kendo. It's the Kendo Improvement Bell, all right? You only get it on this channel. You go down there, it's by the subscribe thing. You have to cl cl uh, click that bell or ring that bell, whatever you want to call it. Give it a good old Kodoti, whatever you want to say, uh, and that's going to make you get better at Kendall. It's true. Shop at Kendall Star. See you next time. Bye.